Hello, Joe the CRM chap here with a brand new video. So today this is, we're going to be taking a look at one of the topics in relation to Microsoft Exam MB400. So this exam has got quite a lot of different things which you're going to have to get your head around, uh, including quite a lot of sort of traditional customization and functional type features as well. So the aim of these sort of short videos is to sort of dive in quickly, show you how to do a particular thing on there and hopefully re-familiarize yourself with a particular um, feature within uh Common Data Service and Dynamics 365. So today we're going to take a look at solutions. So hopefully everyone is fairly familiar in terms of what solutions are, the importance of using them. So we're just going to basically go through today and we're going to try and create a solution from scratch and we'll sort of explain what we're doing uh, as we're going along. So these days, um, typically you're going to want to be using the brand new Power Apps interface to be able to do all of this. Uh, so it's make.powerapps.com that you want to be using. And within here you've got a lot of the similar type of things that we had within the old classic interface. So, for example, we can create our solutions on there, we can work with our various entities and things like that, which is really great. So today we're just going to create a brand new solution, first of all. I'm going to go to new solution up there. Uh, we'll give it a name, we'll call it MB400 Demo. Uh, we'll just select a publisher, which we've already created. We've also got the option of being able to create a new publisher from scratch. Uh, this will basically open out into the old classic interface for us to basically uh, create it as through the traditional way, if we so choose. But for today's example, we're just going to do JJG up there. And then we're just going to give it a version number, we'll just give it version 1 down there. We've got some additional options that we can configure. Um, so like in the old interface, we can set up a configuration page. Uh, we can also give the solution a description. Uh, typically, you'd want to make sure that you've got a description for your solution or maybe use it as for a change log or something like that. Uh, so in most cases, try and make sure that's been populated. But with this all configured, we just want to quick create on there. And we can see straight away we've got a brand new solution up here. So when uh, we drive, dive into this uh, by clicking onto it, we can see there's no components in there at the moment. Um, and we can, we've can we got some of the same familiar options we've got up here. So we can export, we can publish, etc. Uh, for the purpose of this demo, we're just going to add in a few existing components. So we're just going to say, okay, we're going to add in some of the entities that we want to work with. So maybe account, uh, contact, what else have we got here? Uh, let's do feedback. Feedback doesn't get much love usually. Um, so the purpose of this demo, we're just going to include all of these components in there. We're not going to be particularly very choosy. Um, typically you want to select the specific components that you want as part of this and not just add everything else in. Um, other things we wanted to try and add in as well, let's add in a security role. Uh, so we'll just do common data service user. Uh, and then what else can we add in? We need a dashboard, don't we? Uh, to show all this information. So we'll just do the Dynamics 365 overview dashboard. So as you can see, we can add solution components in in a fairly similar to, similar way to the classic interface. Uh, we've also got the option of being able to go into the classic interface if we so want to. It might be that maybe there's a specific option there that's not quite available for us on there. And we can see that whatever we do in the new interface is also reflected in the old interface. It's the same um, database, same information that it's updating, which is obviously very useful. We'll click out of that for now then. So we've created our solution, we've added in our various components. At this point then we want to start thinking about um, exporting this out into a different environment. Uh, we can click export up here. What you would also, if you've been making any entity customizations or creating new fields or things like that, typically you'd want to make sure you publish all your changes. So we'll just do that just for the sake of doing it. So we always want to make sure we're doing things like the best practice approaches. And a new feature that you've got, which we'll um, see in a minute when this is finished refreshing, which is really useful, particularly for developers, is the solution checker. I would encourage you to take a good look at this. So uh, it's something that you need to install from AppSource in the first instance. But once it's installed, you can run this every time you export out your solutions. It will, also, it will scan through any custom code that you've developed. So whether that's JScript form functions, C Sharp, plugin assemblies, whatever that you've put into the system from an extending or developer standpoint, it will go through scan and offer you some really useful recommendations on how you can improve your code, whether it's just you know working to best practice approaches, removing things that could be potentially deprecated in the future. There's a whole host of different recommendations that it provides. So I would really encourage you every time you export our solution with any of the components that I mentioned already, give it a quick run through the solution checker uh, and you won't be disappointed. But for this purpose, we're just going to click next at this point. Um, we're in the new experience, uh, it automatically increments the version number every time we export things out, so that's really helpful. Uh, but we can choose to override this, so maybe I just want to give it maybe an additional number on there. Then at this point, we've got the important decision about okay whether it's managed or unmanaged. Um, 
so the, the, the advice moving forward now from Microsoft is that managed is the way to go. If you're moving stuff out into a, a live or production environment, you want to be trying to have your solution, your various components as a managed solution. In the cases where you just want to move your solution into maybe a testing environment or you want to chuck it into Azure DevOps, into your Git repository, then you'll typically go unmanaged. But really, anything that's going out into a live environment, into production, is something that you want to be um, doing as managed. For this purpose, we're just going to do export down there. Gives us a few minutes down there. And it, uh, it basically just exports it in the background, and similar to what we're used to, we should see a download popping up down below for our new uh, solution that we've created. Just give that a minute just to export out. Yep, so we can see down there we've got our solution down there. It's in a zip file, and it's basically the, the, the solution that we're sort of used to sort of seeing as part of the as part of um, um, you know, as part of you know working with dynamics day in day out, so not much change there. All the features that you've got when it comes to working with solutions in the new experience, you've got the ability to be able to clone your solutions, and as part of that, being able to create your patches or your solution patches. Um, dependencies, you can view your various dependencies. This will pop out into the old classic interface. We can see in this particular case that there's no dependent components detected, i.e., there's nothing that we've not added to the solution that's going to be needed, and we need to have it in the solution in order to work. So that's really good. But in here, you would typically review all this and any components that are missing or not going to be in your target environment, you would look at removing potentially. And that's pretty much it for creating solutions. So as you can see, the Power Apps Portal gives you a really nice, clean new interface to be able to do all this in. A lot of the things that you would typically be able to do within the old or the classic experience are available to you. And you have got the options part of this to be able to um, go back into there if you need to for any specific need. So this has been really useful uh, in preparing for your revision for this exam. Uh, any questions at all, let me know in the comments below and uh, catch, you, catch you again soon. Cheers.